Hi, everybody, and welcome back. Oh, yes. Here we are on the way up to Christmas, and we are looking at careers. And we're going to go over this ground a lot, and it's really important. And so as part of our Be Christ strategy, I'm looking at hardworking, be hardworking. And the little verse that goes with that, or the part of the verse that goes with that, is this. You will eat the fruit of your labour. It's a great little statement, and it means you will eat the fruit. It's bigger than just the labour. Whatever you do, you will eat the fruit of it. And you know what? If there's no labour, there's no fruit. And that is um, a very real scenario, and it always has been. And a biblical principle is this, if you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. And I don't know if any of you have seen Clarkson's farm. I like it. I recommend it. It's really good. But he starts doing farming and um, he actually sows in his field and he misses patches for whatever reason, whether he's being stupid or lazy, whatever reason, the net result is there are empty bits in the field where there is no crop, no fruit. So, so he is really eating the fruit of his labour. And there are consequences to inaction for all of us. So with action, there's consequences. And inaction, there is consequence, cons or there are con consequences. One of the consequences for me once, we we run a few vehicles here in Thomas Towers and um, I, I got one of my vehicles was off the road and you're supposed to to do this thing called SORNS, it's statutory off-road um, notification. And um, I'd forgotten. And it was in action, whether it was deliberate or um, I'd just forgotten. I got a letter through the post saying, we're fining you 90 quid for your inaction. <laughs> anyway, I, I just went, please release me, let me go. And they let me off, which was great. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I groveled and, and it really worked. So in action, there are consequences. My story is this. I left school at 16 and I just um, I got lots of friends who uh, were farmers sons and we uh, I just like being on farms. And so I got a job. It was an easy thing to do as a farm laborer. And I did love it. I did love it. But I had a eureka moment. And I really did. I thought one day there's got to be a better way of making money. Uh, because although I was doing something that was easy for me, um, I knew I needed to do more. And I was eating the fruit of my labour, um, which was not a lot of money, <laughs> basically. So I left and I went to college and into industry. And over the next 15 years, it was very profitable uh, financially. I enjoyed it a lot. And it enabled me to have a change of career in my 30s and to go off to college. And I became a minister of religion and I've led uh, several churches, um, loads of youth clubs. Um, and it's been a fantastic pathway, if you like. And here I am now as uh, your chaplain and it's all a part of that pathway. So we do have different pathways and we eat the fruit of our labour. And talking about different pathways, a number of you are, are aware that uh, I went to London, stayed with uh, some friends. My wife and I stayed with uh, a couple we know. And we stayed in this wonderful apartment of theirs with a balcony and this Canary Wharf and all the city of London. It was awesome. And throughout the weekend, he's on the phone. He's apologizing. I'm really sorry about this. I've got to do this. Other. And um, so I kind of say, well, what, what's going on? And he says, well, I've got to close this deal this weekend. I said, oh, yeah, what's that for then? And he says, oh, it's for six and a half million quid. Oh, oh right. OK. Yeah, OK. I said, is that, is that a big, big deal? And he goes, well, it's kind of about average, really. Oh, there's, uh, there's actually 10 on the go at the moment. Now, the thing is, it's this. Some may say, oh, it's another world. It isn't. It's the same world. 
And that is the whole crux of the matter. It's the same world. You eat the fruit of your labor. And uh, that's his pathway. And it's the same world if you're sleeping under the railway arches at Waterloo, or if you're living in a penthouse in the city of London, or you live in a tiny village in Zimbabwe with no running water or electric, or if it's the war in the in the Yemen with those millions of people who are starving. It is the same world. It is the same world. And we need to understand this. You will eat the fruit of your labor. And one thing I really, really would love to get over to you wonderful people is this. Understand that there is a future. And when I was in your position, I never thought about the future. I really didn't. But you need to understand there is a future. And you will eat the labor. You will eat the labor. You'll eat the fruit of your labor. OK, so you need to be working now. When I was 15, I never had any idea what would be happening in 10 years time. But there is a future. And there was for me. By the time I was 25, which to you may seem a million miles away, but it's not. By the time I was 25, I was married. I had a son. Um, I would bought three houses, um, loads of cars, motorbikes. You know, there was a lot of life. And I was amazed to where we'd got to in just those few short years. But you eat the fruit of your labor. Do not forget that. This lovely little verse that St. Paul writes, is this, and we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. So there's three positives and one negative there. It's warn the idle, warn them. There is a future and you will eat the fruit of your labor. God bless you. Let's have a, a prayer. Heavenly Father, would you help us in the different pathways that we take? Help us to work hard, to be hardworking and help us to do all the good positive things and make the world a better place around us and help us to eat good fruit from the good labour that we have in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Have a fantastic week.